Um, I think personally that this college is a college by the school of water but I think it's a little bit overrated. Even though the numbers say it's like that, it's just, I feel like socially, it's not as bad as people rate it. Um, in general, I think that most people can handle their alcohol if they're responsible, although there are those people who overuse it, get completely wasted, and just feel that that's their way of expressing themselves and releasing stress. Um, I think that there's different ways to go about it. I think that in some regards, our policies are almost too lenient. The part we do with alcohol in some regards is when people get caught, um, sometimes by an RA or staff member, it's kind of like a, 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 a policy in the back saying, like, don't do that anymore. They don't really, we, we feel like the students sometimes can get away with more than we should. And the policies that are put into action sometimes are just too easy going when you have that freedom. So I think if you really explain um, the new consequences and sometimes put it into action a little bit more, with the college um, on the end of it, that would put a better stand on what we should do with it. Uh, so, and obviously the numbers that we're giving are fairly staggering. I honestly haven't taken over that high. Uh, but really any college is going to be, or could be considered a party school. Uh, and, and a new age is that we uh, rated the, 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 the top 10 list that goes out every year, and new age is just sort of top of that. Uh, so it means that any, any school can really be considered a part of school because, regardless, there's going to be 21 year olds, there's going to be people on campus. Uh, and obviously, rates of incidents involving drug and drugs and alcohol are uh, the lead line. Jim, are we finding that those that those number numbers are higher each year? Is it a kind of rising trend, or is that pretty common? I give you some numbers. Um, the uh, and it's still tough comparing year to year, just because we have only got it through about two thirds of this year. So, sure. uh, but just as an example, back in 2010, 2011, there were two students suspended for alcohol. <coughs> In 2011-2012, there were five, and this year, like I said, we're up to one. The, uh, there are 85% of the students involved in those incidents, or 85% of the students involved in incidents of that 644, 85% of those students were involved in drug and or alcohol violations. That, you know, last year, there were 746 students involved in incidents of uh, alcohol use for the entire year this year for RBA 660. So it is just the numbers that I have here just for three years left. And it seems to me that it's increasing. So I guess my, my thoughts on that is that once, uh, once students get to college age, once they turn to one, they're either going to be, or they're going to be predisposed to the actions that are already taking place in the environment, the college environment. Either by repression uh, and basically taking access away, uh, uh, taking the access to these, these substances or at least education of these substances away until they turn 21. Or these students are already taking an active part in uh, drug use or alcohol use. So I don't know how, I don't honestly think that there's really much that a college can do. There's certainly I wouldn't say do nothing, but I don't know the extent of how much of an effect they can have. Uh, honestly, I think education uh, in, at the middle school and high school level is going to be the best way to combat uh, these, these trends. Well, so I want to ask the audience a <coughs> question uh, that I can answer from some of your answers. Um, so I have a question for Professor Bernard. Um, you um, so well, let's, that, let's actually wait just a second. I want to get some more responses to the question on the floor, and it's just about. Well, okay. I'd I, I love, I love that. Uh, we just want to get a response in terms of how we, how do you, as a Keene State student or a faculty member or whatever, respond to you know being labeled a party school? How does it make you feel uh, in response to that? Because it, 
uh, it seems to be an issue, right? We're not in here talking about how much we love to bake cookies, right? Thursday night in Keene has become synonymous with the word binge drinking. Like, that's why we're here tonight to talk about it. And, and really, if we can get a response to why, if that's a problem or not, uh, that's what, I, what I'd love. It's just a question I want to wrap hold up before we move forward, and then we'll come back to you. Well, I'll touch upon that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I think at Keene State College, when people come here and during the freshman orientation get in trouble for alcohol or drugs and not completely kicked off or suspended from this college, that sends a message saying that it's okay to party. And like you said, that you don't find consequences. What if this college fined people for every alcohol incident? Do you think that that would have reduced that? And I think with that message, I think people don't really understand why they're at college. Like, why are you here? Is it to party and black out every Friday night? Because if it is, you should probably go home and stop wasting $30,000 a year. Yeah. 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 Do we have other response to the question? Yes, sir. Just getting in front from my front body. Sorry, I'm I'm a little bit sick, so I'm just, That's right. do I didn't want to stand up. <laughs> I think uh, there's somewhat. It's a complicated question because when people hear the word party school, I think the image in their mind is not doesn't really connect to reality because. The culture of being in school, I don't, I don't care if you go to Harvard, you go to Keene State, wherever you go, if you're a college kid and it's the weekend, you're, you're probably drinking. When someone says party school, or somebody says their school is a party school, it's really defining the capacity for a non-student to show up and find a functioning party. Keene happens to be in a location where that's extremely easy to do because so many of our students live off campus. It's a quiet town. People have houses. They have the ability to throw these open parties and things like that. So when you call a school a party school, it really doesn't say anything about the students, in my opinion. It says it's just about the community. Okay. Do we have another response to the question? You can put it back. Right. Okay, I'm just going to be like completely um, blunt. It's not necessarily my opinion, but I think when um, kind of like going off what the last two speakers said, um, when like upcoming students or people who are like looking for colleges find out that Keen is a party school, that makes them want to go to school. And that's like a sad fact, but I think that's it. Yeah, please do. So just as sort of a drug as possible to those last comments, I think a, a lot of, I mean, at least one of the underlying causes of, of the, that thought process is the way that parties and party schools are portrayed in actually in, in media, uh, specifically movies. I mean, if you, in the last five to ten years, you know, we can name countless instances of uh, movies, blockbuster movies that have come out and it's like college or high school kids going up to a college and getting wasted on the weekend with that sort of no adverse effect except for an empty bank account. And you're in high school, we need that much money for us. It, it's putting this sensationalized inner vision of partying on a college campus uh, past what the reality is exactly what uh, the gentleman from that said. They, it's not reality. Uh, I personally can remember probably the first week of uh, this semester. Uh, we were at a friend's house. There was a large amount of alcohol there. And it was, obviously, the first weekend back. So we'd, we'd like to have a good time. But ended up with uh, someone's nose being broken. Uh, the two bucks broke out with property damage. And it, it's, it, the way that these instances, these uh, actions, parties are portrayed in these like you said, it's not, it doesn't reflect the 
All right, so it's a good question to kind of continue to ponder. Uh, I kind of started with that tonight saying, obviously we do see drug use and alcohol use both illegally and legally in our community. And the question that I kind of pose to my students and I pose to you and, and faculty members alike, what, you know, how do we want it to look in our community? Like what, what type of community, why are you using? Right? Do you want to enhance social engagement? And is it actually equating to that? And is the, the issues that we're finding within the community strictly about the King State student or also about an environment in Keene that invites a type of uh, excessive behavior? And that's a really great question. Um, but something to kind of continue to think about, like what is the consequence or what is the desired end? And if it's an enhancement of a good time, and yet, you know, that good time ends at 10 right, because of massive excessive intake, uh, what happens between those hours? And those are the concerns I think that um, certainly concern me, but something we should think about, right? What is the end that you're trying to get out of it? Uh, and what is the end that we get with a degree from King State College if it's also being linked in the wider you know, university system as a college campus that's full of, of partying? Just some things to think about that I think uh, we do well to bring out. Let's move to our next speaker, uh, Catherine Turnitin.